<laughs> or I should say, good afternoon. Um, so thank you for uh, taking the time uh, to come listen to my story. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about uh, pen testing chat ops. First, I would like to say that I would li very much like to thank the uh, Code Motion organization. I actually originally gave this talk at Code Motion in Amsterdam, <laughs> and uh, it was uh, well uh, so so well received that they then uh, invited me to come here to give it again. So, uh, well, thanks to you guys uh, for inviting me. Um, so, yeah. So I work uh, essentially at a pen test company, uh, radically open security. However, uh, as a pen test company, we are extremely influenced by the DevOps community, uh, which is part of the reason why, uh, of course, I'm here to give you guys a story today. Um, we are, uh, just as an aside about us, the world's first, as far as I know, not-for-profit computer security consultancy company. Not-for-profit. Uh, so <laughs> what that means, essentially, is we are a commercial front end for a not-for-profit back end. So the commercial front end is a security consultancy company. The not-for-profit back end is something called the NLNet Foundation. And the NLNet Foundation is a uh, Dutch foundation that for the last 15, 20 years has been giving money away uh, towards uh, open source uh, digital rights projects, uh, you know, also things like EFF, Tor, uh, GNU, you know, uh, a lot of good stuff for the community and basically anything to make the internet better. So. Uh, we started essentially three and a half years ago uh, to put a non-commercial alternative into the market because it was my personal belief and also the belief of many in the hacker community that security consultancy had gotten too commercial. <laughs> so we sort of wanted to create an uh, entity that could take security uh, and specifically con security consultancy and pen testing and sort of give it back again to the community you know, from which it... it is sprung forth. And uh, of course, the security and hacker community has very, very much in common with the open source community, uh, culturally speaking. So, uh, it, yeah, so uh, basically, we have a number of uh, core principles uh, that actually will influence our operations, which is part of the reason why I'm telling this story. But uh, some of our principles include things like openness, transparency, and open source. So openness and transparency, what that means in practice, we work in chat rooms, OK? Uh, I'm sure many of you here are familiar with Slack. Who here is familiar or has used some form of Slack? OK, good. We do not use Slack uh, because it's a third-party cloud service. And uh, well, as the t-shirt says, there is no cloud. There's only other people's computers. <laughs> you know. And as a security company, of course, uh, we can't put our pen test data for our customers on a third-party cloud. However, we do run an alternative called Rocket Chat, uh, which is essentially a open source, self-hosted Slack clone. Who here has ever used Rocket Chat? Oh, almost nobody. OK, well, check it out. It's almost, I mean, it's, it's equally as good as Slack, uh, but it's, you, you own your own data. It's perfect. <laughs> so, and on top of that, I have to say the developers are super responsive. <laughs> you know, if you talk with them, uh, you know, feature requests. Uh, we've even submitted, of course, a few, uh, you know, security disclosures. You know, <laughs> but they're always extremely fast uh, in fixing things. So, I, I cannot highly recommend uh, Rocket Chat enough. Anyway, but uh, so we work in this Slack-like environment, and uh, openness and transparency, hence, because we also invite our customers to join us in those chat rooms. So generally, what, how it usually works with security consultancy is uh, the consultants come in, they act like these little black boxes. You know, I mean, they, they treat computer security like it's some kind of like Harry Potter black magic, you know. <laughs> They're just like, you know, security is really hard. And we're the experts. Just, you know, stand back. We'll fix everything for you, you know, and then we'll send you a report uh, and a big bill at the end, you know. <laughs> and then if you say, well, can I look over your shoulder maybe? Because if you guys are so, you know, such wizards at the stuff, you know, there's probably a whole bunch that I can learn from you. And then they're like, no, 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 you know, <laughs> and then they'll like, you know, try and keep you away. So uh, we do it exactly the opposite. So we invite the customers into our chat rooms so while they're working, they can actually hear every conversation that we have. <laughs> Uh, and we also have a chat bot. I'm going to get more into the chat bot a bit later. <laughs> but, uh, and the chat bot is actually coupled with our GitLab repository. And it actually makes announcements as we're working 
that essentially gives a few times an hour at minimum, usually an update of exactly what we're doing. You know, and in such a way, we're trying to sort of explode, you know, that whole process inside out. And then instead of making it this opaque process, we're actually maximizing for openness and transparency. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, hence this leads into the whole chat ops thing, uh, which I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about. But uh, this is some of the backstory that I think will help you guys understand why we're actually making the engineering and design decisions and the operational decisions uh, that we're making. So, okay. So, but then we come to the question of what is chat ops? So raise your hand if you know what chat ops is. <laughs> Two people. Okay. So uh, chat ops is essentially a concept that we stole lovingly from GitHub. So GitHub, of course, is a fabulous company. We all love GitHub. And GitHub, very similarly to us, is a distributed company. So of, of course, they do also have an office, I believe, in the Bay Area. But they also have staff all over the world, including in the Netherlands, by the way. In fact, I think the closing keynote uh, is, uh, also lives in Amsterdam. Strange, strange how I always meet people from Amsterdam and other places, but anyway. Um, but uh, the point is, there's people spread all over the world. And it's the same thing with uh, radically open security. You know, we've got penetration testers in the Netherlands, but also in Germany, you know, and also all throughout Western Europe. We've got some folks in Poland. We've all got some folks in India. We've got some folks in Latin America. I've got like three different pen testers in Australia. <laughs> I mean, so when we say, you know, distributed, it really is distributed also across time zones. But uh, the thing is then, when you have this sort of Slack-like environment, you know, these chat rooms, uh, Rocket Chat, it makes it really easy to coordinate work amongst staff that is physically distributed and even time zone distributed. I mean, the nice thing about having chat rooms that are sort of Slack-like, like Rocket Chat, is that it maintains uh, a backlog. So people don't always need to be logged in at the same time. The communication is asynchronous. You can log out. And when you log back in again, you can read what you missed and then be able to carry on from there. Again, this is also super useful you know, for the customers who don't always want to be there fully. But uh, you know, uh, again, when they do check in, they want to be able to see what they missed. So now chat ops is then this concept that we stole from GitHub in which they actually conduct their DevOps from the chat room. So essentially, your chat room becomes kind of the command and control center, as it were, <laughs> uh, for your operations. So what GitHub does, for example, is they will deploy pieces of their infrastructure from the chat. So if, for example, they want to spin up a new server, they essentially can type a command. It almost turns your chat room into a command line. So you can essentially type into your chat, you know, essentially deploy a new server, and then it deploys. If they want to you know, also redeploy other parts of their infrastructure or update their website, or uh, another thing they can also do is, is metrics and uh, you know, statistics and visualizations. And uh, so it's, it, you know, partly they can sort of query the status of things, and partly they can also make changes. And essentially, it's turning your chat room into a command line, kind of. And it sort of allows you then to intersparse human conversation with automation. And ultimately, when you have e a distributed team, it makes for an incredibly transparent way of allowing multiple people to work together and also allowing people also to know what the other people are working on. There's other hidden benefits of chat ops. All, for example, onboarding new folks. Oftentimes, when you onboard uh, new staff members, for example, you have to set up their, uh, their working environment. Now, the nice thing with the chat is it requires very little to get the chat running. All you need is a web browser. I mean, granted, you might need some authentication, uh, either one factor or two factor, uh, to be able to uh, log in and access the chat. But once you're in, you need nothing special, which basically means that you can access the chat room on your laptop, from anywhere. It, you can even access the chat room on your cell phone. Because, I mean, all you need is a, is a web browser. And essentially, a mobile web browser is just fine. But what that means is it's centrally managed by the system administrator. You know, and for us, also with this model of including customers, it also makes it super easy. Because again, I mean, we can essentially include them in what is essentially our office environment without actually having to set up anything on their computers. <laughs> 
So in that way, in that sense, it's super easy, uh, you know, to be able to get new people, you know, set up and uh, allow them to fully work within your environment. So that's really easy. So I uh, originally discovered this whole chat ops idea at uh, the uh, DevOps days in uh, Amsterdam. So uh, uh, Dirk Jan Bussink from uh, uh, GitHub had uh, given a, uh, a talk on the matter. And I saw it and I was like, this is it. <laughs> you know, I was like, this could totally be used for security. This would be incredibly useful for pen testing. You know, and I basically ran home again and, you know, also, you know, showed my guys, you know, <laughs> and girls, you know, the, the talk and was like, you know, we need to do this. This is going to make a huge difference. So we took then this concept of uh, chat ops and we started customizing it for use in a security company, in a penetration test company. And we've really, you know, developed a whole lot of different things with it. So this is an example of, uh, well, what our working environment looks like. You can see, first of all, this chat room environment. This is, um, so this is Rocket Chat. There also is this bot. You can see this bot called Rossbot. So Rossbot is a deployment of a piece of software that was also developed by GitHub. That's called Hubot. So Hubot is essentially a generic chatbot that you can run in a variety of environments. So it's, it's very similar to an IRC bot, for those of you who are familiar with using them, uh, except that it can run you know, in Slack, in Rocket Chat, in Campfire, you know, in any number of uh, different uh, chat environments. The way that the bot works is you issue commands. So it can either, you can, for example, say Rossbot help, uh, in this particular case, and then you can uh, spit, uh, spit out a, a help menu. But you can also, it can listen for other things. It doesn't necessarily have to include its name. So, uh, and we use the, this chatbot for all kinds of things, from the complete and total useless, <laughs> you know, to the, uh, and, and fun, but fun, you know, to the total useful. So on the one hand, we've got things like, uh, there's this command called Rossbot pug me. So you just say Rossbot pug me, and then it spits out this photo of a pug. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's completely useless, but but we like it, so you know <laughs> that's enough. You know, we also have you know other things that are really just for fun. I think there's this one uh, called uh, Are you Rossbot? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? And then it uh, spits out Pinky in the Brain quotes, and then uh, <laughs> we even installed at one point Cards Against Humanity just because we could. So uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff is just fun for uh, for culture. <laughs> but there's also incredibly useful stuff that you can do with it as well. So uh, this is actually a little bit of an old uh, slide in that uh, we're using Rossbot help, but we actually created a new command that was called Rossbot man, which was actually uh, a bit more uh, broken down and detailed. It's essentially creating like a man page kind of thing where you can actually navigate uh, per section and, and per topic. And we even started having uh, Rossbot send you know, that help menu. Instead of sending it to the main channel where it's called, it actually sends it to you via a direct message. So it's actually not disturbing everybody else in the channel. <laughs> you know? and, and this is sort of the start of how we're starting to customize it in our own ways you know, to be able to uh, you know, make it work for our purposes. One of the things about uh, chat, by the way, which I'm sure many of you have noticed who are, who are, who are used to Slack, is well, what we call chat dust. You know, I mean, there's really an awful lot of it, <laughs> you know, sometimes. So anything that uh, we can do to help promote either chat etiquette, you know, to try and keep the signal to noise uh, ratio uh, good, uh, or just uh, to also, you know, segment the traffic, eliminate useless traffic, or at least put, put, put useless conversation into its own separate channel where it actually belongs, you know. Uh, but w again, we've got tooling for that, <laughs> at least for, uh, for some amount of that. So, but you can see there's uh, different things uh, that we have. Uh, you know, so for example, we have raw spot and map. Yeah, now we're starting to get into the stuff that's actually useful for security purposes. Uh, so if we want to conduct an Nmap scan, uh, like let's say, uh, for example, on our own infrastructure, <laughs> then we can do that from the chat, you know? Uh, other kinds of things that we can do from the chat is uh, raw spot rainbow tables. Ooh, that's a good one, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so essentially, if we want to uh, be able to crack a particular kind of hash, you know, instead of needing to, uh, you know, log into some separate uh, set of servers to be able to access the rainbow tables, we've hooked it up so essentially that too is accessible from the chat. So 
another really important part of uh, penetration testing is reporting. Uh, techies, of course, tend to dislike documentation. <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, d due to that, we've uh, very heavily automated the process. Uh, so essentially, all the boilerplate, that kind of stuff now uh, goes uh, completely automatically. Uh, I mean, it used to take us, for example, a, a week when we first started the company to write up a quotation. Now, once we understand what the scope is, it takes us a half hour. So <laughs> the name of our uh, document automation system is Pentext. Pentext. And uh, we have, first of all, completely open sourced it. And second of all, we've even made it an, an OWASP project, uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, OWASP. So OWASP Pentext. So, but what is Pentext? So Pentext is basically our document automation system that follows our entire process and operations from initial request, pen test request, you know, through scoping, through the quotation, you know, through converting it into an actual pen test, you know, with all the chat rooms uh, and everything that we create, uh, through the actual process of writing up uh, the individual findings, non-findings as well, uh, and then to uh, converting that into XML, compiling the XML, producing a PDF that eventually uh, can be downloaded by the customers in our GitLab repository, and then finally to automatically generating the final invoice. So that entire workflow, which essentially is more or less the, almost the entire workflow of our company <laughs> for the pen testing process, we've essentially automated that. So essentially it just starts with filling in an A4's worth of XML uh, during the uh, scoping phase. That generates that 13-page quotation. <laughs> you know, the minute it's signed, we literally clone the quotation repo to, to, to get, m make a start on the pen test repo. So all the boilerplates and all the information from the quotation is already filled in. And essentially, we use GitLab issues for filling in uh, the information about the findings. So the pen testers actually don't have to deal that much with XML. <laughs> we have an, a conversion script, also launchable from the chat, that then, again, converts those GitLab issues into the XML. We can compile the XML uh, from the command line. <laughs> and then uh, it basically spits out this URL that's clickable. So you click on it. And then a PDF opens uh, you know, in your web browser. So you can actually see what it is that you just uh, compiled. And then uh, you know, all the way to, uh, and of course, again, the customers also have access to their GitLab repo, so they can download it directly from there. It's actually not necessary for us to send the report in some other way. <laughs> you know, and, then final, and then finally, you know, uh, Rawspot you know, create invoice, you know, <laughs> which literally then takes the information from the quotation and auto-generates uh, the uh, the invoice, <laughs> which then my business guy can do a quick sanity check on and then uh, and then send. So that you know is uh, is basically it. So the uh, it's well documented. Again, you can find it in GitHub at our uh, radically open security GitHub. Um, this is what the XML more or less uh, looks like. So it's. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you can, uh, if you want, be able to uh, edit the XML directly if you want to tweak things. These days, you don't have to generally very much. <laughs> but, you, but if you want to, the XML is sort of uh, uh, structured as such. So you can see basically section ID, attack narrative, title, uh, section uh, vulnerability findings, spear phishing, et cetera. But uh, if you compile it, this is what it looks like. So this is, well, I mean, what a standard you know, pen test report would look like from any company, <laughs> basically. So again, the nice thing about uh, this being open source is you guys can take this automated infrastructure, stick your own company's logo on it, <laughs> you know, and house style, and you guys can actually use this internally in case you guys have uh, any internal, you know, routine scanning or internal pen testing that you want to do if you guys also want to have kind of a streamlined process for it. So, um. Yeah. So again, this is then uh, again this is sort of a little bit uh, old, but uh, in, in either case, we use this PDF build uh, command, and uh, and this is sort of an example of how it would look like then if we want to uh, uh, click on that uh, PDF link. Uh, I believe, uh, yeah. Well, the shell command for that has been depreciated by now. By the way, speaking of shell commands. Um, of course, the input on this is sanit sanitized. Uh, the very first time we ever used this, of course, the very first thing my hackers tried to do was break it. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, so basically, uh, <laughs> I 
it worked a few times too. <laughs> and we uh, kept fixing it and kept improving it. Now is perhaps a good time also to mention that uh, with our chat ops commands, we also make use of role-based access control that we've implemented. So what that means with role-based access control is that not every user, or, or not, I should say not every person in the chat room is allowed to perform every command. You know, there is perhaps, uh, you know, it could very well be if we're using a chat ops command to create a new pen test chat room, you know, maybe I want to let my project managers be able to execute that command, but maybe I don't want to let my customers be able to do, to do it, you know? <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we also have hooks, for example, uh, that we use for project management. We use um, Canboard uh, for our project management. Uh, we use Kanban, uh, so as probably some of you guys uh, here may as well, uh, to manage our workflow. And we literally have chat ops commands that can uh, dump the contents of the CAN board <laughs> you know, into the channel so we can actually see what the CAN board looks like without having to uh, open a browser window. We can also do individual queries from the CAN board per project. And we can also do project status updates also via the command line. We've also got another thing, speaking of uh, CAN board hooks, um, this is pretty cool. So I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with, uh, there's this thing called uh, Qbot uh, ship it. The, uh, how many of you guys know the ship it squirrel? <laughs> One person, two people, okay. So the ship it squirrel is this kind of silly thing that if you go, you know, uh, the name of your book, ship it, then essentially you get a squirrel. That's it, you know, but, but everybody loves it because, hey, you just shipped something, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of this like really, you know, fun and, you know, it doesn't actually cost anything. It's just fun, you know? I mean, you know, way to sort of celebrate that, yeah, we just shipped something. So if, for example, we send a quotation, we can then do raw spot ship it, and then we get the squirrel and we're like, yeah, and then we can move on to the next, uh, the next thing. Same thing with delivering pen test reports. But we've actually made some hooks uh, that if we call the ship it squirrel, it can actually move stuff on the CAN board to finished, <laughs> you know? So that's actually really cool. So it actually combines the act of being able to celebrate, you know, your successes <laughs> with being able to actually update the CAN board, <laughs> you know, to move something to done uh, in a way that uh, doesn't annoy your staff members <laughs> because, you know, and in a way they might actually rem remember to, to do it. So, so that's kind of the funny thing also with this chat ops. You can really tie hooks between different things, between different parts of the system. And it really makes things very centrally managed. It makes things super organized. You know, and, and the thing is, you know, there, there are so many possibilities for what you can tie into the chat. Uh, Okay, so uh, this is what uh, our GitLab repository looks like uh, for, uh, you know, one of our pen test reports. Uh, we have subdirectories for things like uh, findings, non-findings, uh, source, scans, uh, etc. So really the trilogy of software that we use throughout this entire story then is really RocketChat, GitLab, CanBoard. But we have hooks into so many other parts of our infrastructure. For example, uh, like maybe some of your other companies, we have a PBX for answering phone calls, okay? We have tied it in so our PBX can send updates to the chat. So if, for example, somebody calls our Amsterdam number, so we have this 020 number, uh, phone number, then we can literally inject a notification into the chat that uh, in the project management channel, we just received a phone call from this phone number, <laughs> you know? So people can basically just see that, you know? Again, it's, it's, it's this whole command and control center idea. Another thing that we can do with the chat, and this is also equally cool, is we can do exactly the same thing with email correspondence. So we have built this system uh, that we call Git Notes. And what it is is, uh, we get some email correspondence, let's say from a, from a customer. What we can do is we can uh, reply to it, but in our reply, we can essentially either carbon copy or blind carbon copy a particular email address that then, of course, uh, is, uh, well, integrated into our, uh, our own system, uh, well, uh, our own SMTP server. So what, what happens then is that as soon as that email address, that special email address is either CC'd or BCC'd, 
a number of things happen. The first thing that happens is a copy of that email is essentially shot automatically into the GitLab repo for the appropriate repository. You know, so we're starting to use this basically kind of as our support desk uh, style system. The second thing that happens is there is an, a message injected into the chat room by the chatbot that basically says, you have just received email correspondence from this email address with this subject at this timestamp. Click here to go to the GitLab repository to read it. So, so basically, any time, you know, and if we're CCing it, it also means as soon as the uh, customer responds, because they're probably also going to include that uh, email, a special email address in their CC, it means immediately then you start getting updates in your respective chat room for that job with that particular customer. You start getting updates. <laughs> super, super handy. But the nice thing is, it's not in some special support desk system where you have to create all kinds of, you know, special accounts for people, you know, including credentials and, and that whole nine yards. But what it means is that anybody who is added to that respective chat room basically has access to the whole thing, <laughs> but just for that one assignment, you know? So the way that it's structured for us is we have a uh, quotation. Uh, well, we have these things called triads. So uh, in our case, uh, for quotations, uh, well, we use the Dutch word uh, offerta. Yeah, sorry, we're a Dutch company, but, uh, but what we have is uh, OFF dash customer name dash project name. So that's sort of our canonical way of structuring, uh, you know, well, what we call then, you know, the triad. But what that means is that uh, ID, that is essentially what we use in Rocket Chat as the name of our GitLab repo and also as our item on Canboard. <laughs> and that also is then the special name that we also use for, uh, you know, hooking into our, uh, our email system. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, I should all, now is also a good time to mention that we also check PGP signatures on this stuff. So, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> um, you know, for some of this stuff, especially, uh, well, we also have uh, email commands. Uh, that also could enable things like creating new pen test repositories and things like that. And obviously, we're checking PGP signatures on that kind of stuff to make sure not everyone can execute that kind of stuff. But that being said, uh, yeah, it, it's actually super cool. Because like, let's say that I go to a brand new customer. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, uh, I don't know, the Code Motion Conference is my next customer. So what I do is I just take some notes with them. And then when I'm done, all I have to do is email these, uh, you know, these uh, notes to basically new dash OFF dash code motion dash presentation or whatever. And then, you know, at uh, our prefix. And then at that point, then uh, first of all, it automatically creates uh, the chat room, the GitLab repository, and the Canboard IM. <laughs> the next thing it does is it automatically adds the appropriate people to the chat room. <laughs> so basically, our project managers uh, are automatically added. So we already have people in the chat room to start out with. Uh, you know, uh, it automatically sets up the uh, the Git hooks. You know, between the uh, the GitLab repo and the chat room, so all the stuff to you know send all the the various things around. <laughs> and basically, at that point, all we have to do it then is onboard. You know, the, our people from. Code motion, you know, <laughs> in this particular case, and then we can basically get started. <laughs> you know, it's super quick, super easy, super streamlined, super efficient. You know, and of course, for any company, you know, where you're, you have staff members, time is money. So anything you can, especially when you're working with freelancers like we are. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's the kind of thing. The more streamlined and efficient you can make this, it's just like super better for uh, for everybody. So that is all super cool. Um, other things. You know, there's so many things, you know, that we can do via the chat. Another example of a tool that we set up to run from the chat was uh, we, some passive vulnerability scanning. So we created a tool that takes the output of uh, Shodan, uh, for those of you who are familiar with that, with uh, basically uh, this thing called Census, uh, the old version of scans.io, or the new version of scans.io. And uh, we can basically take that output and then uh, correlate it <laughs> so that we can then query by a certain domain and then be able to query from those databases what uh, information about vulnerabilities you can get from passive sources. So again, we open source this tool. It's available on our GitHub. But we can also execute it from our chat room. So again, it's just taking all of these different kinds of tools you know, that you would use, in our case, for pen testing. But of course, with you guys in your own company, I'm sure you guys have you know, other things that you might be able to do with all of this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and again, we can launch, launch this from the chat, get the output there again. 
it's ideal. Another thing uh, that we can do with the uh, chat rooms, and that's enabled by the whole chat ops thing, is what we call red-blue pen testing. So what this means is we take the pen test of a customer and we gamify it. So what this means is, now let's say I want to test a product. So what I can do is I can take the dev team, you know, the actual of developers that are working on that product, so it can be coders, sysadmins, DevOps people, okay? It doesn't have to be security people. In fact, it's better if it's not security people. <laughs> and then what we can do is we can take, let's say, about a dozen people. We can split them into two teams. It could either be a red team and a blue team or a red team and a red team. And each team is led by one of our professional pen testers. Now, what happens is we have gamified that process, and the developers try to pen test their own product under the guidance of these pen testers. And we gamified it in the way that we actually created, using chat ops, a scoreboard. <laughs> So that uh, if one team scores a point, then essentially they can you know, get some kind of you know, motivational thing. Y you can actually see in this chat room here that uh, you can see it says, a point, of blue, a point for blue for finding mis missing input validation. And then I typed in in that case, good job, blue. And you can see that raw spot incremented blue, 24 points. And it prints out this little motivational uh, image. <laughs> You know, so in such a way, we're actually use, using chat ops to be able to turn their pen test into a game. <laughs> you know, and if then uh, you know, these developers spend you know, between, uh, let's say, um, uh, well, three days to maybe a week on actually stepping out of the role of being a developer and actually pen testing their own stuff, if they run out of ideas, no worries, you know, because we have the professional pen testers there to kind of gently nudge them in the right direction and to give them ideas in case they have no ideas of their own. But you know what's really great about that is at the end of the uh, at the end of the week or whatever, the number one comment that we get with that from the de developers is, and I quote, "I will never look at code the same way again." And that's what it's all about. <laughs> You know, so in this, in a sense, it's really you know that gamification is allowing us to basically take a pen test that's run within more or less the normal budget, you know, because it's only requiring two of our pen testers, you know, for a man week, and it is turning it into a training exercise. <laughs> I mean, the real investment of the customer actually is freeing up their developers during that period of time, <laughs> but again, it's a training exercise, and you sort of have to see it as such, you know. And this is the great, great thing about the openness and the transparency, <laughs> you know? Because again, the more the developers and sysadmins and DevOps folks can actually see what's going on, the more they're going to internalize, and the less you guys are going to need us next time. Or at least, you know, that, that's the hope, you know? Or at least if you do need us, hopefully it'll be for new things and for more complex things than the previous time. So, but what else can you do uh, with chat ops? Well, it turns out there's actually quite a lot more that you can do. So, you know, there's other kinds of scanning tools uh, that you can add. I mean, we, uh, I only mentioned uh, Nmap so far, but what's stopping us from using the chat to also launch, launch things like web scanners, you know, like uh, a W3AF uh, or Wapiti or, you know, any of those ones? Uh, or, you know, infrastructure scanners like, uh, oh, you know, OpenVos or, uh, you know, uh, uh, SQL uh, testing tools like, uh, like SQL Map, you know? It's all within the realm of possibility. It's a little bit harder with Burp Suite. We've been thinking about that one. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, other things like uh, password cracking, brute forcing, you know, Hydra. You know, we can very easily just, uh, you know, put, uh, put our standard word lists uh, on the server and then be able to launch that uh, from our chat. Again, obviously, this is one we need access control on because <laughs> we don't want our customers uh, using our infra to uh, pen test other people randomly. So. <laughs> We have to think about all that stuff. But, uh, but again, you know, it's like the sky's the limit with trying to come up with a number of things that you can hook in through that unif unified interface of chat. Um, recon, so uh, passive recon, things like uh, who is, you know, just doing Google searches uh, or DuckDuckGo or let me Google that for you. <laughs> yes, we actually included that one too. Um, you know, or a passive scanning tool. Uh, so exploitation, hash cracking, I, I mentioned already, uh, as well as the rainbow tables. Spear phishing. We actually have a spear phishing suite that we developed. 
And this is actually really cool. So what we can do is we can uh, scrape a web page to create a pretext. It actually literally will take uh, this web page, turn it into HTML form, <laughs> and uh, then we'll essentially send that web page out, uh, well, basically uh, as, as an e email. <laughs> so uh, then what we can do is we can add a list of uh, target names, and then we can uh, be able to send those out. And then the way that it works is the links in that scraped web page are actually all instrumented so that if somebody clicks on them, then we can essentially get uh, an announcement from the chat bot in the chat room that says essentially, you know, this email address has just click clicked on this pretext at this timestamp. You know, so that's actually really cool because if we're then spear phishing, or uh, well, spear phishing is the wrong term, it's actually gener generic phishing. But if we're phishing then a customer, we can add security officers from the customer into the chat room and they can actually watch in real time as their own staff members are clicking. That's cool. <laughs> So uh, another thing we can do also from the chat room is be able to generate some statistics uh, about uh, sort of the ongoing phishing activity that's also launchable uh, from the chat. <laughs> the, the one time that that actually didn't work quite so well is uh, we had actually just uh, <laughs> uh, did a, done, done a really large exercise um, uh, for a huge umbrella organization of uh, a certain kind of public entity in the Netherlands. I'm not going to mention which one. But we essentially were uh, phishing 41 different targets, and each of these targets, so some of them had like, you know, thousands of staff members. And that was the one case that it actually wasn't useful because there were so many announcements <laughs> in the chat room, it actually had rendered the entire chat room useless. <laughs> so we actually wound up having to create a separate chat room for conversation about it because there was so much noise about, uh, you know, <laughs> while they were clicking, you know. So I, that, that's sort of more useful if you're fishing a smaller number of people. But, uh <laughs> but that was actually really interesting because I'd never uh, experienced that before. So, uh, but, th but that was cool. So, um, you know, but in general, I mean, I think that radically open security really approaches uh, pen testing and security in a DevOps way. And I very much consider radically open security to be a DevOps shop in the way that we're setting up. You know, we use chat ops. We use containerization, <laughs> you know? Uh, and of course, also a lot of the, the same cultural things that uh, are spoken, uh, spoken about at conferences like these uh, are also uh, the kinds of things that we embrace uh, as a security company. So also, again, but we have a number of needs that are universal. It's not unique to being a security company, but it's actually every company, every IT company, you know, has a, a need for, for example, project management. So the fact that we use a uh, CAN board for managing our workflow, the Git, not Git notes I already told you about. Another thing we do that's consultancy company specific is we have this thing called Rawspot Charge. So if one of our pen testers is in the chat room, he can actually, or he or she can actually say, raw spot charge the number of hours description. And then what happens is raw spot will then say, will spit back, okay, thank you very much, name of pen tester. These are the number of hours that you have used so far total on this pen test. So you have now used, let's say, uh, 10 out of 120 hours on this pen test. And it actually shows a status bar showing you the percentage of the number of hours that are used up in the pen test so far. Now, this is cool for so many reasons. One, it's cool because it helps my pen testers to keep their work uh, within the scope, <laughs> which, you know, we used to actually lose a whole lot of money on underscoping. <laughs> Since we introduced this mechanism, actually, uh, they're much better at keeping the work within the scope now. The customers actually love it because they can interactively and incrementally see where, you know, what they're paying for, where that's going, and exactly what it's being spent on. So it's a level of transparency for the customers that they really love, you know. A and on top of that, it's, uh, you know, I mean, let's put it this way. Consultants hate declaring hours, but we've come up with a way for them that it's really easy to do. It's just a chat in the command room. So then why wouldn't they do it, you know? <laughs> And then, of course, if I can just make it a requirement that, well, you have to declare log your hours via raw spot charge, you know, before you send us an invoice, you know, then it can actually inform, m make sure that they're actually doing it. But, you know, if you make it so easy, they're not really going to complain. <laughs> so in such a way, you know, it, it's just win, 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 all thanks to the chat and, uh, and chat ops. So other things that we do, uh, infrastructure and automation. So I already mentioned role-based uh, role access control. Logging. We have a separate dedicated channel just for error logs. 
So which basically means that for new infra folks, we don't have to give them weird accounts on our server. We can basically just give them a access to the chat room so they can have direct access to the logs that way. And it also means that they can even discuss the logs, you know, have discussion in between the logs. So it's perfect. We also have a, a, a dedicated channel just for debug logs as well. So this is something you guys can also think about. A and in the future, I mean, you know, it's trendy nowadays, but what about creating AI chatbots, you know? What if we could use chatbots to assist with things like interviewing our staff members to see if they're happy? Or, you know, interviewing our customers to see if they're happy, <laughs> you know? If you could have a standard automated question list, which of course annoys everybody, but then uh, if you actually also have humans in the channel, it means if the, if the customer or the staff member gives an unexpected answer, then an actual human can step in <laughs> and take the conversation further. So the question is, by making smarter chatbots, how much of the really important stuff for our company can we manage to do and automate, <laughs> you know, in a way that we can still keep the human touch? So. These are all things that we think about. Uh, our company, Radically Open Security, has won a whole bunch of awards. Uh, we are the 50th most innovative SME in the Netherlands, according to the Dutch Chamber of Commerce, <laughs> which I'm super proud of. Uh, we've won multiple awards uh, for our NetAid Kid project, which is an open source uh, Wi-Fi Tor and open VPN router we created for journalists and activists. Uh, I was, yeah, I've won a few Women in Tech awards. Uh, one of our hackers won a uh, Pony Award at uh, the Black Hat Conference in the United States, which uh, is uh, well, one of the largest security cons. Uh, we're in the Sprout Challenger 50, uh, which is uh, just some entrepreneurship thing. And uh, I also was named by C the Dutch CIO magazine to be the most innovative IT leader of this past year. So <laughs> I'm not mentioning, mentioning this uh, you know, <laughs> to, to toot my own horn here, but I'm actually mentioning it to show that all of this stuff you know, from our weird workflow <laughs> to only working with freelancers to being a not-for-profit security <laughs> consultancy company, you know, these prizes essentially validate the idea. So it all seems kind of weird and, uh, and new, but, you know, ultimately, the, you know, we are starting to have an impact on the market in a positive way, and we're starting to get recognition for it. So thank you so much, and uh, I would be more than happy uh, to either take questions now if that's possible, or if not, to talk with you guys afterwards. So thank you so much for your time.